Hello everyone, these are the factors affecting evolution notes for Unit 9. Let's start an introduction with an example. <clears throat> We've got the giraffe, so we have fossil evidence that links um, some older extinct organisms that were similar to giraffes and intermediate forms that would lead to the long-necked giraffe that we see today. So we have some evidence that shows that they have changed over time, uh, that they have evolved. So why did they evolve these long necks in the first place? Well, there's two options. Uh, the first proposition was from this guy, Lamarck. Uh, his ideas about ev evolution said that animals change because of acquired traits. These giraffes stretch their necks to reach the available leaves. This acquired trait was passed down to the next generation. So by stretching their neck, it got longer and they pass a longer neck down. Over many generations, these necks got longer and longer. Uh, the second proposition is more of a Darwinian, um, follow not laws of natural selection. Some giraffes were born with longer necks, so they already had long, longer necks when they were born, not as long as a giraffe today, but a slightly longer neck. And since they were born with it, they inherited it, and they can pass it down to the next generation. So over many generations, more longer neck variations can accumulate to make the eventual longer necks. Uh, and that's what we're um, thinking happened more along the lines of today. So that would be evolution by natural selection of the adaptations available. So natural selection adaptations are one very important way that organisms evolve and change, but it's not the only way. So the five factors we're going to look at here are adaptations, gene flow, mutations, sexual selection, and genetic drift. All five of those things can lead to changes in populations over time. So that first one we looked at was adaptations. They promote survival and reproduction, and through natural selection, some of them will survive, some of them won't, and the amount that survive uh, will have more of the adaptations that are helpful to this organism. So over time, we would expect a change in the population. Uh, gene flow. So to understand gene flow first, a gene pool is a collection or of genes or traits, uh, excuse me, the collection of genes for traits within a population. So we've got a bunch of letters here. If you remember, those letters are alleles. They represent a gene, they represent traits. So Within this population, if they're all interbreeding, all of those alleles together would be the gene pool. The gene flow is the mixing of the gene pool. The gene flow is these alleles going between the different organisms and uh, when an organism, a, another one would come into this area, its genes would go into the gene pool if one organism left this area, its genes would be removed from the gene pool. And if you have physical barriers that separate different populations, like mountains or lakes, this can prevent gene, for, gene flow from happening. And over time, by separating them, you can end up with two different species, depending on the environment, depending on random chance. But by separating them or keeping them together, you can prevent or cause changes to happen. There's also mutations. So mutations can be random. They're mostly random. They happen during DNA replication all the time. Oh, they can also be caused by the environment, like radiation and chemicals. But mutations can create new variations. They create new genes, new alleles. Things like red hair and blue eyes were caused by mutations and then passed down. Uh, red hair is linked to other genes, like fair skin, that is an adaptation uh, in colder environments with less sun because the lighter skin allows them to synthesize more vitamin D for their bodies. Sickle cell anemia is uh, a disease, but it also helps prevent other diseases that could be more serious, like malaria, from happening. So if a mutation creates a variation, uh, the unfavorable mutations won't be as likely to survive in the next generations. These mutations will continue to be passed down as things reproduce. The favorable mutations are more likely to survive and keep passing them down. So you'll change the population over time as these mutations arise. 
Uh, it's worth noting that not all mutations are good. Most of them are actually bad or they don't do anything. A few of them do help though in the right circumstances. Uh, sexual selection, so the selection of mates. You can survive your whole life but still not reproduce. You've got the right adaptations to survive, but that doesn't mean that you're going to get to pass down those genes. You still need to find a mate to do so. So birds do a lot of this with the feather coloring and the songs. They choose mates based off of uh, how pretty they are or how good of songs they, they sing. And over time, you can uh, measure changes in the colors that are appearing in the feathers of the uh, kinds of notes that they're adding to their songs. These can develop and change over time too. And it has led to some really cool varieties of birds that we see. Genetic drift is really important, um, especially when it comes to things like viruses. It is the random uh, change in population. By randomly reducing a population size, we can change the frequency. Uh, it, so it drifts. It drifts in one direction, not immediately, but slowly. It happens a lot more easily with small populations. So if I had a bunch of red and blue marbles, and I picked them at random to put them in the next jar, um, I might have a different amount of blue and red marbles. And then if I did it again, I might expect to see another ratio change. So in this third generation, by randomly picking which ones make it to the next one, I've now ended up with even more uh, blue marbles. So it's a random chance of changing over time. Um, not for any adaptation or other specific reason. But if I get enough changes together and this organism becomes different enough that they no longer reproduce together, let's look at finches. So they had a very small initial population in the Galapagos. They were separated and prevented exchanging of genes with the other finches in South America. Uh, through natural selection, certain beaks were more likely to help them survive depending on what food was around them. Uh, eventually mutations could help add changes to the beaks and feathers and other things. And they would sexually select each other based on, you know, they were probably closer to the ones that they were eating the same ones with. Uh, so by now not uh, reproducing together, since this bird, this finch, and this finch don't reproduce together anymore, they are now considered different species. So species, species are the distinct populations that don't breed together. And speciation was when, is when uh, we evolve and create new species. So it can happen through different kinds of isolation, whatever reason why they don't reproduce together anymore. There can be a lot of them. If they're in different areas, they, they can be separated by geographic isolation. They're not exchanging genes anymore, and they can become more different. Um, even if in the, they're in the same location, they might have different songs, different behaviors that mean that make them not want to uh, breed with each other. But if they end up breeding with each other and these offspring still don't continue reproduction, for instance, if the baby doesn't fully develop, if the adult that you've reproduced is not able to have children, like a liger or zonkey, um, these would be considered uh, different species. The tiger and the lion are, no, are not species. They can't produce fertile offspring. They can't continue this line of traits uh, in reproduction. So again, we had adaptations, gene flow, mutations, sexual selection, and genetic drift. These can change the organisms, change the species, and if there's enough changes together, it can lead to entire new species. So by combining all these things together, we can create small changes over time, and if enough changes accumulate, we can have large changes up here in the population. So this helps us uh, recognize how things like the evolution of birds could happen. Small changes over time for whichever of these reasons build up to go from dinosaurs into birds. And that's it for these notes. I hope that was helpful.